Bro, our draft experience has been absolutely crazy. Right, we got an opportunity to be at the actual draft site, which is cool for me because, well, as we know, I didn't get drafted. We sat down with Justin Reed, Lou Young, just crashes the party, so we throw him in the show too. But, dog, we actually got to hear national anthem rehearsals. I mean, this has been really cool. What we're doing up there, man, to be invited to Pivot, we appreciated it. YouTube came out, showed us love, man, I had a great time. And that's what we do. We had to pivot and pivot and pivot again, and we made it happen. Gotta love it. I mean, you know what it is, man. We accept, we adjust, and we move forward. So you might hear some things in the background. Lou Young is going to crack a couple of jokes that may make you fall out your seat. But most of all, it's about the pivot and the NFL 2023 draft. Here's the show. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. That is crazy, Jay. You came out here first year, dog. First year, man. It couldn't have rolled it any better. <laughs> yeah. Something ugly in Texas, though. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he deserved it. Boy, hey, you saw both sides. Know, I'm sure we'll talk about it. I done wrote the highs and lows of everything, man. From thinking I'm about to go to the Super Bowl, being stripped away from it, 4-12 two years in a row, and now we on top. <laughs> That's how excited I was going to New England. I'm like, yeah. I'm close. I already know, man. Check it out, though, man. We are outside Union Station, Chiefs Kingdom for the 2023 draft. Can't beat that. But if you are here, Chan, you have to have a Super Bowl champion. Y'all always have one, but now we got two. <laughs> Troy, Troy Palomalu carried him to a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and he always talking. <laughs> Man, but welcome to the pivot, J. Reed, Freddie T, Chan, to y'all. It's RC. Thank you to DraftKings, also our partners over at Happy Dad. I mean, you little bro to me. You yeah. know, superstar at Dutchtown in Louisiana. Mm, you go to Stanford. You, you take a different route from your older brother, Eric. You go to Stanford. You're a star there. Should have been a first-round pick. We could talk about some of the things that we both feel precipitated you falling. You're great at Houston, uh, become a leader on the team, have some ups and downs, some things you go through. Come to Kansas City, you fit right in, and you win a Super Bowl in your first year. And now here it is, we're in Kansas City, we're outside getting ready for the draft, and you're getting ready as the Super Bowl champion and as a Super Bowl champion. For you, what was the experience like this year, your first in Kansas City? Man, I'll tell you what, from where we started in Houston to, you know, first two years there going so well, having such high hopes, uh, felt like we had a squad there. Then to the next two years being what it was, going 4-12, and 12, and then coming into an organization like the Kansas City Chiefs, um, the first thing I noticed when I first got here was the difference in just how the teams are run organizationally because everything bleeds from the top down. And there was so much structure here, the way Coach Reed runs his ship. It kind of bleeds into the culture of the whole team and how guys buy into the program. There's no ego. Faculty, staff are willing to do jobs that, not, that aren't necessarily their job description, but anything to help the collective team do better. And that, that attitude um, bled into everything, man. And then. When we first got into the building, um, I remember in Houston, sometimes we'd have conversations where it's like we didn't want to bring up Super Bowl, like we didn't want to jinx mm. it or something. But in Kansas City, from day one, it was Super Bowl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Day one, it was Super Bowl. Training camp, OTAs, the, the message was we're here to win a Super Bowl. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know? And then that just happened throughout the season. I still remember um, week one in Arizona in the defensive room, uh, Coach Spagnola had a picture that he put up. It's like we're going to finish this season exactly in the spot that we start in the season. First games in Arizona, we're going to finish in Arizona. That was a slide. And, you know, fast forward, uh, we ended up doing that, man, and battled adversity throughout the way, but came out on top. And it's a hell of a feeling being at the top, man. I can't tell you. And you know that old dumb saying, like when somebody gets their ass whooped, they be like, oh, that's going to make him a better man. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't want my ass whooped. But, but you personally, you're talking the organizational change is there because 
going to Pittsburgh, like Ryan took us back home and let us see what Pittsburgh is. Mm -hmm. You see, I saw the difference between the Dolphins and what Pittsburgh was, so mm -hmm. I understand that. But you personally, like seeing the ups, having the hope, and then you're right. I, I, Houston, y'all weren't going to win. Yeah. I don't know if you knew it. We knew y'all weren't going to win. I mean, that, that last year I was there especially, you know, but yeah. it was like I was on a contract year, so it was like I still got to go out and ball because, you know, it's more than just – than just this year. Yeah, but those those ups and downs, did, did you know how was that emotionally, and did that did that really make you better? Because I mm. think that's BS. I'll <laughs> say this, man. Like in the moment, that shit hurts. You know what I mean? Going through the ups and downs. Um, funny, we're in Kansas City, but that playoff game, we we're up by yeah. 24 points, and then ended up losing by 20 points. Um, I say th the only way that it made it better for me is I think it made me a better leader, and that I got to tell the story about it to other players. Mm. So it's like whenever. I had a message, like, for instance, halftime in the Super Bowl, and we are talking about, like, we down 10 at that point. And we talk about, man, like, the game's never over. Like, I've been – we were up 24, and the other team came back. Like, no matter what the lead is, no matter if there's time on the clock, on both sides of it, if you're ahead, you got to step on their throat and finish the game out. Mm -hmm. And if you're behind, you got to fight and believe and come back. Hey, Jay, let's stick with the uh, Super Bowl theme, right? We had Travis Kelsey on the show. And he said exactly what you said. We don't talk about the other stuff. We just talk about Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl or nothing else. And that sparked a, a thought in my mind. I thought the first thing you would have seen when you got here was the potential Hall of Famer and all those practice matchups that mm -hmm. you guys were going to have. How did that make you better as a player to be able to go up against a potential uh, first ballot Hall of Famer each and every oh, day man, in huge. practice? Travis is the real deal on so many different levels. I mean, he, the way he runs his routes is so like, you know, I mean, you wouldn't think that he's as shifty as he is just looking at him, but the guy is athletic and more than anything, he's smart, man. Him and Pat are on the same page. He'll, He's always open because he'll read a coverage and the route he's supposed to run isn't open. Mm -hmm. He'll adjust it, but he'll do it in a way that he don't get in anybody else's way. Like he won't mess up somebody else's route, but he'll find the open zone. He'll, they'll just play basketball, man. It's funny, like um, a lot of the basketball players, you know, Pat got a big basketball background. We have this basketball goal that's in the locker room and guys play ball. Obviously nobody touched Pat when he shoot the ball. <laughs> Pat, always, Pat always gonna have an open shot. You know what I mean? But like they kind of just freelancing and playing ball and, and seeing them do that and then seeing them play on the field and practice and in games, it's kind of the same thing. They're really just playing basketball on grass, going out there having fun. Does it look like the pregame stuff we see on TV all the time when you guys are shooting at the at the yeah. goalposts? Yeah, like we have fun, man, but it's like the attitude is have fun when you're supposed to, but you know when it's time to get serious, mm -hmm. um, dudes get serious. You know, when we're on the field, we don't play any games about yeah. that. Speaking of serious, it, it was cool. I flew home with E. Reed, your brother. Mm -hmm. It was E. Reed on the aisle, Yank in the middle, me by the window. You know, and just the pride that he had. I know your family. I was kind of telling Channing on the way up. I was like, man, he just comes from great stock comes from great people. I was like, not only athletes, but intelligent, uh, caring, uh, concerned about more than themselves. Knowing what Eric went through in supporting Kaepernick and supporting a community and a culture that mm. needed him, how was it to share that sort of win, that sort of success as a family unit for you guys with all you've been through? You know, that's actually the first game that my older brother actually came to watch me play. You know, we had one game before when he was playing with Carolina where we played each other at the same time. He won, unfortunately for me. I guess to bring that up all the time. <laughs> but, you know, the experience that he went through, it hurt, man. I mean, he set two franchise records that on his last season. He set a record in sacks for a safety and tackles for a safety. And the next year he doesn't get picked up um, just because of some of the things that aren't football that got attached to him um, that, you know, hurt his career. That was the first time he actually got to come and watch me play. It ended up being a Super Bowl game, man. It was, especially bring, it was special to bring the whole family together and uh, have them all at. That's the first time we got the whole family together like that at the game, man. And it was on the biggest stage. So uh, yeah, I don't know we got some pictures of me after the game going up. I had a headache. I was so excited, you know, running around screaming. Uh, but it was, a, it was a special feeling. I don't know if you knew. Yeah, it we was, knew. Y'all wanna go. Mm -hmm. Purposely distance yourself from his opinions and the way he is because I think he yeah. can still play in the league, but it's obvious he's not, yeah. you know, he's not playing the it's league. A, it's a fine line with it because I will never, I will never not be on his side. Mm -hmm. That's my blood. That's my brother. You know what I mean? He was my, he was my idol. He was my role model when I was growing up. You know what I mean? I compared everything that I did to what he did at that age to like, as, like measure myself on if I was on track. Um, I will always have his back, but it's a, 
it's a fine line you got to play with just, I guess, picking your moments to be vocal and be loud about it because, like, I pick my moments, you know, intentionally, but I don't try and do it in a way that, you know, I've seen this movie before, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I know the potential on which way this can go, so I pick my moments when I vocal about it, and sometimes I just got to, you know, sit tight because at the end of the day, I truly believe that I can have a bigger impact um, whenever I build my platform, my brand up bigger than, you know, what it is when I'm in, in a vulnerable state that I can get pulled from underneath me so quickly. D. Reed was a leader on all those solid uh, Niners defenses. What was the one thing that stands out the most to you that he taught you as an older brother? Raw concepts, first of all. You know, I used to um, be in, in the Bay Area too. I used to go play on Saturday and then I go watch him play on Sunday. And then he'd break down the film with me on what they were doing and, you know, why they were doing it. So I think that gave me a head start. And then also, you know, he always hit people, so I want to hit people. <laughs> but I'm not as big as he is. You know, he was like 218. I'm like sitting like 205, 208. You know, five surgeries later, I try and pick my tackles a little bit better. But um, just that combination, being a smart player, but also, you know, you got you to set the tone when mm -hmm. someone comes in your space. And, you know, the film, you want the game to start on, on Monday. You know, when they turn the tape on, like, damn, I don't want to, like, I want them to go talk to their quarterback. Yo, I'm going to be upset at you if you put me in a bad position with this dude running the middle of the field. You know what I mean? So you, got, you don't want to disappoint him. You had the cheat code. Yeah. You were learning from an all-pro safety. Yeah. In what, high school? Yeah, high school. When, I was in, when he was in college, I was in high school doing the same thing. When I was in college, he was in the NFL. What was your drive? People had money. Honestly, told me about you, bro. People had money. You went to Stanford. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're a, you're a, you're a coddled yeah, yeah. little baby. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, but I just, I had so much passion, man. I had so much passion and, and will inside of me that I wanted to stand on my own, too. And you know what I mean? I didn't want to ride the coattail of anybody else. Um, my dad was an All-American track athlete. He had a record that stood for 20 years at LSU. Uh, running the t 110 hurdles, NCAA champion, was going to Olympic t trials and then he ended up blowing out his knee. Um, so, but the thing that the thing that always stuck with me though is like my parents taught me and all my brothers. You know, I actually have another brother named Ryan too. He didn't end up making it professional, so sometimes you know, if you don't know, I have a, another brother on top of that too and a sister. Um, but I, we were all driven to you know stand on our own two feet. I would never feel like I always take good advice. I, I'm good, ears open take good advice, but at the end of the day, like, I want to be the man in charge of my life, you know what I mean? I don't want to be vulnerable or, you know what I mean, have to try and ride on the coattails of somebody else, and we all had that inside of us, so. And the dynamic, um, because I think sometimes little brothers or, or younger brothers, you know, they can, sometimes they can slip through the cracks in that they want to do things their way. You know, they don't always reciprocate what the, the bigger brothers try to give them. So I, I want to ask you, what was that dynamic like? Did you, were you just a complete sponge? Did he have to force you to come train? Or did you say, look, E, let's, let's go. I want to I learn. Teach me something. What was that nah, like? Yeah, it was, it was always, like, we were always just competitive, man. It didn't matter what it was. Cards, video games, football. We were, we were competitive, and I just wanted to, um, I wanted to compete with him. I wanted to compete with both my brothers. Like, like I said earlier, Everything that they did, like whether they were 15 years old, when I was 15, I wanted to be one step higher than them. You know, as well as I like to think that I was doing, I was still always Eric's little brother. And that pull to go to the LSU, man, I, I grew up on LSU ball, you know what I mean? Tiger Stadium, Death Valley going there, you know, people tailgating Friday night before the Saturday game. Um, so the pull was definitely there, but it ended up being just a, a combination of, um, I wanted to pick a different route. You know, my brother helped me with that and saying that, you know, it's not where you go. You make the school, the school don't make you. So, you know, it's wherever you go, they'll find you. You know, I got D2 players going first round. Titus Howard was one of them. Yeah. So the combination of that, um, wanted to broaden my horizons. Like, you know, Louisiana, where I grew up, was a little bit of a bubble. And I kind of wanted something different. You know what I mean? I want to, to spread my wings out and grow. And it was just a good situation that Dwayne Aquino recently left Texas and he had a resume of guys, Earl Thomas, uh, Michael Huff, Sage Griffin. So I knew that he had the experience to get me where I wanted to go. Um, so all those things blended together with my brother playing down the street at San Francisco. It just made sense to do it. So he just pulled the trigger and did it. And you go to Stanford, you ball out, you declare early. 
and then you drop in the draft. You killed every category. I was looking at your stats no, on the way over here. Stupid, talented, and explosive. Now me, you face to face, you big as hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, they got, they, I, that got to be a story. It has to be a reason why first round grade, top safety, yeah, and all the stats, you go to the third you round. You know, when I was taking, I, I visited with 28 teams before the draft. Houston actually wasn't one of the teams that I talked to because they didn't think they had a shot at getting me. Their first pick was in the third round. You know what I mean? And I thought I was going one or two. And, you know, some of the visits, I ended up having some conversations on social justice issues. This was, you know, fresh off of Kaepernick and my brother Neilan. And, you know what I mean? This is still a very hot and taboo topic that was going around the league. I remember some teams asked me straight up, are you going to kneel? You know what I mean? Like, this is going to be a distraction. And at that point, I'm like, Nah, coach, I ain't gonna kneel, you know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't gonna kneel, coach, you know what I mean? I, I, do, I do what you need me to do. <laughs> you feel me? But lo and behold, like, you know, round one go by, it's like, okay, I knew it was a possibility. Thing was, round two start going by. At this point, my feelings start, you know, getting hurt. Like, I'm like, man, what's happened? I didn't think this was gonna happen to me. You know, I had a party with 100 people at the party, and you know, my mom wanted, the, the, we wanted a big thing. I wanted to be small, but we had 100 people come I considered walking out of the party because my feelings was getting like hurt. Yeah. On, I'm just dropping. I don't know. How, I don't know like when the bleeding gonna stop. Yeah. And then my, my name got called. Man, ended up easing the, all way all the tension. At that moment, I was happy that I had a sense of direction to go to. And you know, my brother talked to me too on just thinking about it on a business side. Like the good part about you not going round one is you don't have a fifth year option. Yeah. So you can get to your bread quicker. You handle business your first four years, you make it up on the back end. Hey, life is ironic, and it presents certain moments. You talked about speaking to 28 different teams and having teams come straight out and ask you, are you gonna kneel? You start answering that question and somebody starts singing <laughs> the Star Spangled <laughs> Banner in the back. So the backdrop to you answering that question on the pivot is gonna be with someone serenading us <laughs> with the very song. You can't write it any better, man. It's not scripted, bro. This is, this is, this is America, bro. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you gotta rehearse, you yeah. know? I mean, we don't for the show, which is probably why we didn't know this was gonna happen. Let's go back a little bit before coming to Kansas City. You mm -hmm. and I had a conversation. I was walking through New York. You were gonna be, uh, you weren't gonna dress for a game. Mm -hmm. You were the team leader in Houston, but you had an incident that, you know, people reported in certain ways, and you were a guy who was leading that team with not only your play, but with the way that you handled yourself each day in the building. What was that moment like for you in understanding all that work you had put in and now, much like your brother, your name was starting to be besmirched with some narratives that weren't necessarily true? Mm -hmm. um, it felt like everything that I had put, put in work to get to that point was put in jeopardy, just like that, off of one moment. And, you know, I don't, I don't ever judge men, you know, by care. I believe that some things Sometimes actions happen as a product of circumstances and situations. And the head coach at that time was in, you know, some tough position that he was in too. Um, but, you know, watching my brother go through what he did and, you know, it ended up being a fight over the narrative. Whenever that happened, I was like, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm damn sure gonna control this narrative and let it know, like, this is what happened before it get, you know, put out there that I have character issues mm -hmm. or something like that. Like, I've never been that guy. I've always been, you know, humble, respectful. I'll give you the shirt off my back, you know what I mean? I just want to help out other people. So first thing was, I remember I called you too, man. You want to control the narrative on what was happening. And I didn't dress that game. Um, ended up letting you know, the world know at the time of the kickoff just because it felt like an impactful time to know, yo, this is what happened. This is a story. Um, control the narrative on what my character was um, and just kind of took back control there. We ended up having a, a conversation with the coach later and he actually apologized um, for doing that because he didn't realize at the time the type of uh, position he was putting me in with my free agency coming up that season. And he apologized for it. I forgave him, and you know we moved on from it like men. Um, but shit, man, it was it was like a dog. This can't be happening to me too type of moment. And you know, for you, it, it was cool. I got to. Obviously, I watch every game, and you know the group chat goes crazy when you make a play. We know how we do, mm. but you taking pictures after the game, like you look genuinely happy. Yeah. What was it like to finally start to get those moments where the hard work, the the effort, the the dedication, the discipline started to turn into success? Not only success, but joy. 
yeah. right? To actually have some joy when it came to playing this yeah. game. Yeah, man, you know, I, it's like I, I fulfilled a childhood dream, man. Like we all, you know, put the helmet on, shorter pads on, and talk about we want to win the Super Bowl. But it's like to have the feeling that you actually did it, man. And you know what I mean? You you look back on those moments on, you know, the, the trials and tribulations you go through growing up, overcoming obstacles. Um, you know, I'm blessed in the way that I grew up, but we all have our own trials and tribulations to get through to, uh, to where we're going to. And, and to look back on those moments and, you know, be at the top, you know what I mean? Uh, unbelievable feeling. Um, shit, man, pure joy, happiness. Uh, and uh, I'm happy I got to share that with my family. You got the Super Bowl ring. What's next? Can you guys repeat? That's the goal, man. I mean, at this point, everything now is for glory. Glory, legacy. You know, it's not like that hunger go away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, got, I can kind of get used to the parades and, you know, being on top. And, you know, uh, we're talking about the world tour that we had this offseason, just a lot of meetings, a lot of shaking hands, taking advantage of the momentum. Everything, life's, life's good when you're on top, man. Everything fold into it. You get more opportunities. You meet more people. Um, you got things you want to do in the community or in business. You know, things just fall in your lap when you're on top, man. And honestly, I want more of it. The whole team do. And quickly, speaking of the Chiefs, you are always a liability as a defensive player. You got Patrick Mahomes, you got Travis Kelsey. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't like y'all, I don't know why. Because y'all give up too many damn points because my man Pat got to chase him. Like, I know y'all don't have no problem with that because that's a cool thing to be in. But do y'all feel like your defense gets the respect exposed to? Hell no, man. <laughs> Hell no. Man. We going to do it right now, we don't get the respect. That's like, that's like our calling card, man. We have certain games this weekend. You know, most of the time people don't remember. You know what I mean? But even the Cincinnati game, defense won that game in the playoffs. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a couple other games throughout the season. Defense won, but, you know, we got two superstars, and they excited and they electric, but, you know, week in, week out, we want to be the reason, too, man. We're not going to get the same glory that they do because, you know, offense sell the tickets. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when it comes time to nut up and man up and, you know what I mean, make a stop, we want that on our back to come and handle it. You mentioned getting to shake different hands and going on the world tour and the different doors that are open to you. You know, we FaceTime after the game, bro. You couldn't even talk. Mm -hmm. And that was like the beginning of the party. We didn't even get to the parade and the rest of it. What was the celebration like being a uh, world champion? Yeah, you know, it's fun. So my crib in Arizona actually got built the week, it finished getting built the week before we got out there for Super Bowl. And it was 10 minutes from our team hotel. So after the game, ended up sending the word out, you know, we go training in Phoenix every off season. So I know some people, and we batted out through this huge house party, man. Probably had like 150 people come to it. <laughs> Unlimited liquor, partying, had all the guys come through. Um, that was the first day. Then we come back on the parade here in Kansas City. The parade happened to fall on my birthday. So then we go through the parade, you know, we had some of the young dudes that were, um, you know, drinking early. I chose the way, I was like, I'm gonna wait until the, we actually get on on the buses before I start drinking, because we're gonna be on there for three hours anyway. You know what I mean? Some of the young cats talking about why I'm not drinking yet. And I was like, we're right, we gonna see by the end of it. You know, they've been drinking for six hours. Some of them ended up in the medical tent getting wheelchaired <laughs> out, you know what I mean? They're having a good time, you know? And then after that, ended up going out afterwards. I'm not gonna lie, I actually ended up throwing up that night too, just because we, <laughs> we were just drinking all day long, bro. And then we had so many young dudes, specifically in the secondary, that I wanted them to cap it off. I want them to feel like champions, you know what I mean? I want to celebrate like champions. So ended up taking them to uh, Vegas. We stayed at the Wynn, ended up going out to uh, Dre's, and then, uh, we had some paid appearance at the win, you know what I mean, to help us pay for the rooms that we had there anyway. But then those two things, bro, went out like champions. And then ever since then, just, you know, still still waiting on some downtime to have like a vacation or something. Yeah. You know, just been traveling, shaking hands, meeting people after that. Your back good? My back. <laughs> Cause I know you've been stroking. I know you hear all the stories. Oh, me and the guy, me and a couple guys went over there and the guys got together and the guys. <laughs> hey man, hey, I done passed the torch, bro. I done, and I'll tell you what, my first two years, I used to go nuts, bro. Especially being in Houston. Yes. I went nuts, bro. But now I like seeing my young dudes have fun, man. I done passed the torch on to it. So if a bad will come up and try to holler at you, you say, this is my friend John. Yeah. I pass it on, man. I done been there and done that, bro. You, I done, you a bro, good man. I, you know what I mean? Damn, we didn't play together. I, I had to play. Now slide him your way. He's <laughs> <laughs> my boy. He's my boy. <laughs> and they be like, hey, this Chan right here. Oh, hey, Chan. how you doing? How you doing? Nice to meet you. We've had the, the opportunities to have the conversations. And it is, it's fun to talk about the parties and the different things. But I know you have a, 
uh, an idea and a, and a thought for bigger impact, mm. right? For for affecting more. You talked about building your brand and giving to, getting to a point to where you aren't vulnerable for somebody to pull the rug from underneath you. What are some of those things you want to do going forward to make the sort of impact that I think your family is about, that Eric mm. was about, but more importantly, that Justin will be about? Yeah. Speaking of just getting involved in the community, man, you know, I feel like I've seen a lot of different lives. Growing up in Louisiana, um, in an area that wasn't too bad, but wasn't really too great either. Um, you know, I had everything at my school. I had people get married at 18, people go to prison, rob, you know, some friends died, like all of that stuff, right? And then I go to Stanford, and you had a school where you got ambassadors, kids, and Nobel Prize winners, and all of that. And, you know, I ended up asking myself the question is like, how do you get from, you know, where I grew up and when what some of the dudes I was going through there, and the kids that's at Stanford, like what's really different about them? Because they're really not that different. You know what I mean? A lot of it, I just came down to environment. I think there's some baseline necessities that people need, knowing where your next meal is coming from, um, having security. Like if you don't have those baselines, then you're gonna have to do what you gotta do um, to try and survive, right? And then that's where some dudes get in trouble. Uh, but if you're able to help provide for that and help them see, and then provide some mentorship guidance um, give them passion, right? You know, everybody want to be athletes because it's easy to have passion in that. But also, for those of who who not fortunate to be athletes, having a mentor tell them how to be passionate in something else and giving them resources to have access to that. So that's what I believe. You know, I've worked with some foundations back in Houston, Kids Meals, um, you know, that provides food to kids that don't have access to it. And then um, some cancer nonprofits. Also, me going to Stanford, being involved in the tech space, I wanted to help pay that forward to the next generation. So. Uh, my foundation, J. Reed Indeed, actually focuses on providing some of the essentials, like nutrition, some of the baseline things that I think just to help people survive so that way they can actually focus um, when information is given to them, they can actually take advantage of it and be present in that moment to learn from it instead of being worried about, you know, taking care of their little brother, you know what I mean, that's at home and might not have a meal later tonight. From that too, just trying to connect dudes, I try to think like what's the smallest way to make an impact on somebody and what worked for me was I had good mentors, man. I had good role models, good mentors, and I believe strongly in that if you put a mentor in someone's life and show them that they have a, a path and a goal that they can chase so that it's attainable and here's resources to help you get there, all you got to do is believe in yourself to get there, you help put kids in that position, man. I think anybody can be successful. So I believe in that strongly and you know, that's what I want my, my lasting impact off the field to be about. And Jay, with that, from the boot to Stanford, Stanford to Houston, Houston here in Kansas City, from a third round pick to a Super Bowl champion, what has been your biggest pivot in life to this point? Honestly, I think getting out of Louisiana might've been the biggest pivot. Just because I love home, man. You can't beat the food and things like that. But I think that my mindset was so closed off mm -hmm. because I just didn't know what was out there in the world. And when I left the nest and you know went out and explored out and um, ended up having conversations with people, um, I think that that you know put a, a light and a and a hunger inside of me that you know whatever you want to do in business. I'm in the commercial real estate right now. I met people in commercial real estate. They showed me what they did. You know, they want to talk to me about football. I want to talk to you about how you got a billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Pick yeah. their brains and, and, and having those conversations um, just drove me, man. It just drove me to where it's like it's nonstop. Like I wake up excited to get to work. I get I'm excited to play football. And then when I get home, I'm excited to, you know, keep enhancing myself off the field, whether it's, um, you know, getting my broker's license or, or what have you. So. I think leaving home is good, um, being able to reinvent myself, you know what I mean? So that's some of the things that might have tagged on to you. Um, while you're growing up, you're able to be in a new space and you know start over from a fresh start. I think that that was big for my development. You know, you talked about your lasting impact off of the field and you know, obviously now the things that you learned by being away and having those conversations and getting those opportunities for growth. But just personally, mm. Jay Reed, like you come from a family background. Chan was trying to see how your back felt throughout. <laughs> you know what? I know why he got so smart. I figured it out. Why is it? He was hitting them smart girls at Stanford. <laughs> I used to like do that. Osmosis, like you it was just, it was just through, coming through. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. You cannot get smarter through your penis. Bro. Not a real thing. If you got a Pulitzer Award and I hit you, I'm getting smarter. <laughs> I'm getting smarter. That's a fact. It's not a fact. <laughs> you know, bro, for, for you, you ever think about what you'll be like as a father and a family man? You know, you mentioned mentorship and your relationships with your father, your brothers, your sister. You ever 
think about down the line, Daddy J. Reed or Uncle J. Reed. Mm, <laughs> absolutely. My parents were good, man. And, you know, looking back on it, I have so much more appreciation for them now than I ever did when I was growing up with them. And I appreciate them in that stance. Um, but my parents never missed a game, man. Like, it didn't matter if we had games, you know, in Florida, Texas, or wherever. My parents tried to make a way to go to every one of them when we were going up through high school, man. They were just present. Their food bill was off the chain. <laughs> and, you know, being able to grow up in that and, and seeing the family structure, um, having uh, a father in my life that, you know what I mean, showed me how to be a man the right way, taking care of your family. You know, you don't have to overcompensate for anything if you're comfortable in who you are as a person. Um, and then you had a mom, too, that believed in you and believed that you can do anything in this world you put your mind to. Um, you know, I, I want that for myself, you know, when I have kids and, uh, you know, I'll be happy with whatever I have, but hopefully I have a son, too, that I can bring up and, you know, show him the ropes and how to be a, a right man for him to lead a family one day, too. For me, it's just a, an honor to sit with you uh, and kind of just let the world know the things that I already do. I'm just proud of you, and I think the man that you will continue to grow into as the world gets to see more of him. There's only gonna be more opportunities. It's only gonna bring more light to the community. And I think you were meant to be so much more than a football player. So keep growing into that, man. And shoot, celebration over, dog. Uh -huh. Let's go try to win two in a row. Uh-huh, and we're right back to it. I appreciate that, man. All you guys, it's fun to get on the board with you. RC, you know you my big brother, bro. Yeah. We always been there and had my back, so I appreciate that. And uh, you know it's fun hopping on the pivot. Yes, sir. Hey, Mary, you're a smart woman now. <laughs> Tell you. I, got you. I did it. Hey, Jay, when he, when he, when he, how's your yeah. man? Oh, congrats, man. Do it again. Yeah, like, I, I watch every week. Do it again. Do it again, for uh, sure. Yeah, so you know, he was good. Hey, fellas, the playoffs are heating up, and we have hoopers that are absolutely going crazy. DraftKings Sportsbook, they want you to go crazy as well. Any new customer using the promo code PIVOT gets $150 in bonus bets. That's right. Any $5 wager gets you $150 in bonus bets. And with those bonus bets, that bonus money, I'm going same game parlay. You just talked about the ballers, right? We know who's going to take over a game. I know who's going to win it, and I know this guy's going to go over in points. I got a same game parlay. I got more money. If DraftKings mobile sports betting isn't in your area, don't worry. They have Daily Fantasy, where they offer cash prize contests each and every day. You can still get paid. So remember, get out your mobile devices and download DraftKings Sportsbook app. That's any new customer using the promo code PIVOT. A $5 wager, you get $150 in bonus bets. That's DraftKings Sportsbook. It makes watching sports so much more fun. Is this Lou or is this Unk? Hey, they said everything. Hey, everything. they said it. They lied and say he played DB. I know he ain't played DB with them legs. Uh oh. Man, I, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he got the Dion knees. <laughs> <laughs> Dion say, why you do his knee like that, man? He said, going here. Prime will talk about you when we went out there to Colorado. My stepmom. She said, uh, she said, Lou, they brought you up. I said, where? She said, I said, yeah. Then my dad, he be watching. Now he on YouTube now. <laughs> Cause I'm on YouTube and stuff, so now he, he, he subscribed to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he yeah. like, hey man, come here. Let me show you this. They, they, they got you right here. And he, he fast forward. And he say, he said, look, 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 look what they said. Look what they say. See, that's you. That's <laughs> <laughs> support, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the pivot, Lou. I mean, you really need no introduction, especially on this platform. I mean, no, uh, no, they can introduce me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you need no introduction. But what I'm most interested in is, is, yeah, we got Lou Young, and you're funny as hell. You can impersonate anybody, but it's the work ethic. And I think a work ethic like that comes from having a background in athletics. Yeah. It comes from understanding what it takes to, ex to excel in a world where a lot of us feel like that's what we want to do for a living. Mm -hmm. That's who we want to be in our career. And then now parlaying that same work ethic, parlaying that same sort of discipline into something else that's extremely fun. And that's making people laugh. So welcome to The Pivot. Obviously, you know Chan, Freddie T, I'm RC, to Happy Dad, our partners. Uh, thank you uh, also to DraftKings, our sponsors. Uh, everybody who subscribes and likes the show, all of your comments, all of those things are so greatly appreciated by the three of us. So, Lou, I actually want to go back to that, bro. Like, you know, you look at all of the funniest comedians or the most successful entertainers. Those are things that they often fall into, right? You learn you have that talent. 
but you were a ball player, yeah. man. How much love did you have for football? I mean, that was that was the dream. You know what I mean? Definitely uh, sports. You know, my dad had me in everything from Taekwondo. I got my black belt when I was 14. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't know that. That's why I be saying, like, don't get these jokes confused. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I can go here if I need to. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, means you're a ninja or a samurai? A little bit of both. My nana, my nana got... He gonna sweep the leg, Johnny! <laughs> sweep the leg! My nana got a crazy story. She said the first day, I was three years old, they signed me up. My dad lied about my age. He said I was five. And she said I was in the corner with a sword just... She said, they gonna kick this little boy out. She, he said, well, get the, get the damn sword out of his, out his, out his hand. <laughs> but yeah, so... From there, that work ethic from there, that discipline, I learned from like that Taekwondo, like it's a, it's like a time and a place for everything. You know what I mean? And I guess my dad must have known my personality as a kid. Yeah. That I was a little, little hyper, you know, I'm over here, I'm over there. Um, not to say that I, you know, I didn't make my mistakes and everything like that, but that taught me a lot of discipline. And then went from basketball, football to baseball. So my dream was really like, I'm gonna go pro in something. Mm. With, with sports wise. And I always told my boys like, you know, we have a tournament. I will always stay with the coach and his family or whatever. And he had a team staying over there. I make the, everybody laugh in the basement. I'm making fun of the team mom or the uncle at the game or the lady on the fish fry. You know what I mean? I'm just joking. I always did that. I always had to like have a balance with the seriousness of the competitiveness in sports. Yeah. From there, I always talk, I told my boys like when I was like seven, eight years old, I was like, I'm gonna go pro, and I'm gonna be on TV. So, however I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get there. Yeah. My boys will tell you that, like they still with me to this day. They'll tell you, he, bro, been saying that since he was like seven, eight years old. So like, it was always part of my dream, and everybody be like, oh, that's cap. Like you know, you wanted to go pro, but like, yeah. But I had a plan at the same time. Yeah. My dad would make me watch Nick Saban DB tapes and stuff, ordering them, you know what I mean, left and right. Pete Maravich basketball tapes and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm serious, bro, I'm real talk. But I would be sneaking around like in his Red Fox, Eddie Murphy collection and, 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 and Bill Cop. Like I'm, I'm looking at all the Richard Pryors and I would be, you know, pumping them in and I would be sneaking with the VHS, watching those, and then he'd come upstairs and I, pop into Nick Saban, but at the same time, I was always a fan of comedy. Hey, uh, Lou, you spoke about personality, and you have a million of them. I pulled you up on Wikipedia, and this don't necessarily look like somebody that <laughs> had much of a personality. All right, so look. <laughs> that. so that's, that's straight out of jail. What is wrong with your head, you too, bro? Can I say something about that? <laughs> that was a time in college I was going through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of things that was going on. Did you still? You used to steal at this age. Come on, man, what you, what you, what you got, wire yeah. on? No, side? I'm just saying, well, I do, I'm mic'd up. But no, <laughs> with, with all the connections you've made, you gotta know somebody at Wikipedia to no, get no, this No, 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 you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? My rookie, I was on four different teams. Like, like, I cut a lot. And I got to Jacksonville, the third team, and it was a dude, I don't know why they brought up that picture when I had the baldy. He was going in on me, and then I was in the back, and I said, okay, all right. I said, okay, I got you. We got on that bus and I ate him up. <laughs> boom, boom, I just, ha, ha. I said, I said keep trying me, bro. <laughs> gonna, I have a long beard, I'm gonna make it a long trip. <laughs> he didn't know you had some bullets too in your gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, you, know, he, you know how it be. Got that money. I'm undrafted, he got that money on, so he walking around with the Louis Burst. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got the, that's when the Balenciagas was real popping. The big leather ones. So, you know, he know about me. Yeah, yeah. How do you find the time? You're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're doing everybody's show, you're presenting, you're, you got ad stuff that you're, you're doing, everything. How do you find the time to get to, you know, all those places? God, I mean, I'm blessed, man, real talk. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a servant at the same time. Like, I feel like my gift is a, is a servant from God. So that's what I'm here on earth to do. And then at the same time, I think the biggest acknowledgement I could give myself is that I find time to be there for my daughter mm -hmm. and my loved ones, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, whether it's I'm at a week here, a week there, within that week, y'all better fly me to, to New York to get to my daughter. Yeah. And then from there, I'm gonna go to my Nana in DC, you know what I'm saying, my mom, and give them that time and, and, and let them know, like, you know, I, you know, daddy on the road, but at the same time, I'm here, I'm present. 
Even when I'm on the road, I'm, I'm, I'm I, they was micing me up. I'm on FaceTime on dark. She crying, tripping with her mom. You know what I'm saying? But at the, like, at the same time, it's like I'm a, I'm a human being. And I think the main thing for me is that it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. It's work, but I'm having fun. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I'm, I'm on here to do. Like, I'm making people laugh. And people tell me, people tell me like, like, it was two years ago, and that's when I really realized, like, I'm really doing my, what I'm supposed to be doing on Earth. Dude's on the sick bed with his mom. He's telling me, like, he's, he's literally looking at my videos with his mom to get through the process in the hospital. Yeah. Like, come on, man, that's, that's bigger than any check I can get. So for me, it's bigger than the check and everything, like you know, the notoriety and everything like that. It's, it's me knowing that I'm, I'm impacting people's lives, and I started with it from a phone. And speaking of a check, Lou, is it this your job? Like, do you have a do you have another side job? Is this your side job? Like, no, nah, this is full time. It's full time. And, that, and that's why I say with sports, it's every day. I'm like the grind don't stop. So for me, like that work ethic that I learned from sports, uh, especially being in the league, I'm like, man, none of these dudes gonna work me. But how do you get better? Like, mm -hmm. like you're talking about running, running, you get faster, right, condition, right, 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 strong, right, right. work out, right. do that shit, eat better. For me, it's just challenging myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm challenging myself. I make new characters. I, I make new storylines. I'm challenging myself. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not afraid of nothing, really. Yeah. Like, I done been in the room, it, it, walked in the locker room with the Grin Reaper. Mm -hmm. And they on my back. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting down and I, right after the meeting, I got cut. So really, I'm thankful for like all the experiences and, and, the, and the heartaches I've had with football, because now it's like, man, y'all can't try me with anything. I'm, I'm built for this. So I know that we, when we watch your, your skits or, or we see it on social or on YouTube, like we busting up, right? But sometimes you're actually laughing too. Like you can't yeah. get through it. Right. Bro, so when you're sitting around and you say, you know what, I'm gonna lay in my bed like Gilly, and I'm gonna be like, you gotta lick it before you stick it. You can't. Bro, how do you, what is, and I think it kind of adds on to Channing's question though, what's the process of building a skit or of building a character or of just seeing something and going, man, I've seen Gilly a million times do these certain things. Here is how I'm gonna add Lou Young to it and yeah. make it funny. I think growing up, I was a big like movie buff, like love movies. Love, like me and my mom used to sit around and watch Saturday Night Live and live in color, Mad TV, and just like put on a show for the family. My dad, he's in the comedy. Like you come to my house, my household, you, you better have some tough skin. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's nothing scripted. It's all improv. And I just kind of, I'm like, uh, if, uh, if I'm watching like a training dance, I'm like, okay, that's what he said, but this is what I would have said. But I'm gonna put, his flow in it with my flow and mix it like uh, with Dion, with Coach Prime. If he's saying I'm coming, right, then I'm gonna <laughs> mix it in there. It's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you say whatever you want over here, dog. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that go, 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 tell some y'all. I'm coming. <laughs> if she look at me when I'm in there, I'm coming. You know what I mean? Like, that's, I'm, I'm mixing it in there, but that's kind of how it makes it my touch on it, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm stealing, I'm just recreating and putting it on. And I, and I got a lot of inspiration from like Martins and Jamie Foxx's and like the Richard Pryor's and the Eddie Murphy's, um, the Wayans, the whole family with the Wayans, cause I, I always liked how they would take like older movies and then put they, they, they uh, flip on it. Right. And that's kind of how I'm trying to do it. And as you bring up them dudes, that you brought up Red Fox earlier, all the, all the greats, Martin and all them. Yeah and you're not making it in football, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that what you're doing now might be harder than making the league. If you look at the dudes that made it no, in the no, NFL no. to the dudes that's been successful comedians, right. it's less successful comedians than NFL players. Facts, but I think, put it like this, I was telling, uh, I was, I was telling Cam, like I played with Cam in, in Carolina, right? And he was just like, man, Lou, you, you know what I mean? He said like, bro, you evolving, bro. Like he gave me my flowers. Yeah. And when I was a rookie coming in the, the Panthers locker room, my fourth team after getting cut, right? That was the first dude that came and just dapped me up after one practice. And he seen, he seen me from that to this. Mm -hmm. Seen me grinding and blah, 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 right? But see me cutting up in the locker room and the lunch room and what have you, right? On the bus, on the plane. 
It got to be sweeter. It's definitely sweeter, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel as hard. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm happy. Yeah. I'm having fun. Yeah. Not to say that football wasn't fun, yeah. right? And and the the perks of football and being in the NFL wasn't fun, right? I went to the Super Bowl. I ain't no ain't too many people can say they went to the Super Bowl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all both can go to hell. Little party bitches. Y'all always hurting our hearts like this, man. But, <laughs> but I ain't joking. I'm just saying, like, I ain't saying like I was a star player on that team. Yeah. Definitely, I'm grateful for it. But I don't know. It's just it feel like I'm more impactful in the world without the helmet on. Yeah. Like, as soon as I took that helmet off, it was like I'm touching. I'm, I'm you know, I'm able to reach so many more people than I ever did when I was playing football. Wow. I think that's the craziest part to me. I'm walking around. When I was playing in the league, well, nobody like, hey, Lou, pick it up. They was like, I'm just walking through. Who's that buddy with the funny shaped head? <laughs> 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 you gotta play. You gotta play a sport or something. You know what I mean? Like, you play something, bro. You, you, your head's all swole. Now I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? Like my, I, it was case in point. I'm in the airport after Easter with my daughter. We sitting there. I'm, I'm in daddy mode. The dude, like, it's him and like his wife and somebody else. And I, I could, you know, you can feel somebody looking at you. Feel that heat. But I'm still in daddy mode. I'm getting her right. He's like, hey, Lou, man, I ain't trying to run up on you, nothing. Boy, you doing your, you know what I mean? Doing yeah. your, yeah. I never got that with that helmet on. So, yeah, yeah. that's the that's the difference. Lou, it all started with a phone. Yeah. And uh, you look around, you see our production, uh, your processes, your production, uh, and your team. Like, how how many of it are you? Like, how many people do you have that that travel with you and One. make it happen? My boy, right, TJ. My boy, my boy, authentic man. That's it's me and him. Me, I've I've known him since I was. Six years old, he was eight. We played Little League football together. So everything that you've put out, everything, has just been you? From the, okay, from the beginning, uh, one of my best friends, her name is Ty, uh, Tiger Pride. She, we known each other since college. She would always tell me, man, you should like really do social media. And that's when like the Vine and stuff was out like that. And obviously, you know, playing college ball, you know, the little Come limit, man. you can't do so, you, it's, it's a, thin line, and I was still getting in trouble, so I was just like, all right, I need to just walk a straight, narrow. Right. 2019, uh, I think she was uh, the first ones that just, just put the camera on me and helped me, and I, I learned how to edit from her. She didn't even teach me, like, she, did, I, she wasn't like, all right, Lou, this is how you do this. I would just be like sitting there watching her, mm -hmm. watching her edit my stuff. And then her mom uh, was like, has Lou ever tried to do Steve Harvey? And then that's how the Steve Harvey stuff blew. Then me and him linked up in like 2020 around the pandemic time. And that's when I started doing that coach slew and making yeah. more longer content. And I was learning about the YouTube and how to make longer content. I'm, st I'm still learning, you know what I mean? And now he shoots it and I edit all my stuff. So no overhead, let me hold something. <laughs> Come on, man. You living like a first rounder now. Hey, why are you watching your pockets? I got, I got seven cameras in here, man. You know what I mean? Check's like, I bet you got something. Though. What's man, up, man? Look, put it like this. I ain't telling people what I got, but when they come for them brand deals, they, oh, we can send our film crew. No, no, baby. I got my man T right there. He gonna get that cut. Yeah. Yeah. And then that edit fee. Oh, that's me. So we get, I need all that. I need all that. I'm, I'm, over, I'm overhead over the overhead. <laughs> you, you talked about the Eddie Murphys, Richard Pryor's. One of my favorite stand-up comedies is Raw. Mm. And Eddie Murphy talks about the fact that he cusses so much, but then like when people run up on him that's foreign, they be like, that's you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Suck my meat, Eddie, right? And stuff like that. Do you, do, you, do, you get, do you get people that run up on you and immediately want you to be funny? They immediately want me to, hey man, do that, do that, do that shit you just, uh, that, that goddamn, uh, man, do that, do that Dion, man. <laughs> I mean, he do the thing with the, the uncle and the, and the, man, do the shit you just did with the. <laughs> I had bro, man. I'm, hey, man, I'm trying to get to my room, bro. <laughs> What's wrong with? You? But at the same time, I learned after my rookie year. That's why I always revert back to football and the lessons. In Denver, we stayed in the Ramada and I tore the whole Ramada up. That right after they cut me, mm -hmm. tore it up. I was emotional. And my my agent Tony Page Chitta, they called me, and they was like, man, you got you know. 
When you when you walk into a room, you gotta leave it, you know, you leave it better than you left it. Mm. And I said, okay, I learned from that. So now anytime somebody meet, I'm, I don't, I'm dapping, I love, because it's genuine and I appreciate it. And I don't ever, I don't ever want to be like, a, a, oh, back, back up, you know what I mean? I might give you a little, I ain't going to give you a whole show. You got to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I give you a little sample. Yeah, yeah. I give you a little, you know, I give you a little orange chicken. But I ain't going to give you the whole thing. So moving into this part of our lives, right, the second career, much like you move into your second career and you say you're touching more people or impacting more people with the helmet off, which I feel like we are too. Mm -hmm. But the other piece of that is, I feel like you offer a different piece of yourself mm -hmm. in this, right? Like when, when you're playing football, even though it's, it's what you do, it's not who you are, right? When you give it somebody comedy, you're giving them a piece of you. When we get an opportunity to talk or we get a chance to bring up an important topic that we're sharing ourselves with, that's a piece of us that people can reject. Mm -hmm. How often do you think about, okay, I wonder if people are gonna like this, or I wonder if I'm good enough? Do, do those questions ever come to mind? I wanna say there's doubt. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very confident. And I'm, I've always been self-confident, you know what I mean? I, walk, I tell people all the time, I walk around no jewels, no nothing, because my, my confidence is gonna, gonna shine light, brighter than any type of chain or whatever on me. But, you know what I mean, I'm human, you know what I'm saying? So, obviously it's like, shit, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know if they're gonna like it or not. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I'm doing what I like. Yeah. So, I just got out of that. I think first early on, it was like, like, how you think this, is this gonna hit? Is that gonna hit? Yeah. Now it's like, well, every episode of Martin wasn't a hit. Mm -hmm. Every episode of Jamie Foxx wasn't a hit. You know, every movie Eddie Murphy put out wasn't a hit hit, but, you know what I mean? But there's so many out there Man. that you got to go through something. Right. Yeah. So that's where I'm at with I'm like, shit, one of these gonna hit. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so if one hit, then you're gonna look at some more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you might look at some more, and then another one hit, you're gonna have to come back again. So whatever you didn't see at first, you're gonna have to give it to me on the back end. And, and you bring up the Coach Slew, you know, you do all so many characters, man. I've been a part of your resume. You, you, got, you got me one time. And the st after you did me, when the first thing you said when you saw me, you were like, bro, we good, we good. And we was good. Real shit, because you're a big dude. <laughs> but, but, but you mess with a lot of folks, Lou. Yeah, 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 is there, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Do you really think you got to somebody or anybody that be like, bro, don't do that shit no more? Nah, nah, OK, OK, you know, full disclosure. I ain't going to lie. I thought Javante Davis was gonna beat my ass one time. <laughs> just because, and he five five. <laughs> I just saw what he did to Ryan Garcia. Yeah, right. 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 Sat him down. <laughs> Man, tap down. It took a move. <laughs> no mas. No mas. <laughs> right. No mas. No mas. <laughs> <laughs> that might be racist, by uh, the way. My wife's Cuba. <laughs> Go on. But, but but I was doing like uh, I think what what kind of started skyrocketing my thing was. Finding my own lane, finding my own person. Chriselle, she's uh, with Steve Harvey, manager. that's who manages me. And she was like, okay, you're gonna do this Sleeve Harvey stuff, whatever, 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 right? He was cool with it. He brought me on Family Feud, whatever, whatever. Y'all brought me on. She's like, well, you gotta find your own way. So now I was like, okay, I gotta get out of that and find me. And then I just started being myself. Mm -hmm. And that Baltimore character I would do, that's like, you know, my brother and my sister, they from Baltimore. Yeah. You know I mean? My, my step, my sister from Baltimore. So it's like, I know that person, that uncle at the at the little league game. So when I'm, you know, you gotta do what he gotta do. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's what they would do at the games. So I just made that character, and some Baltimore people liked it, yeah. some didn't. <laughs> and it was like uh, his trainer said, "We gonna do, what we gonna do." Calvin, you know, Calvin <laughs> said, yeah. "We came to do what we do, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stop messing with my youngin." <laughs> right? And I reposted something I did in 2020. And they re and like did a slot a swipe to it. And he commented on it like, "Hey man, you ain't even from the city, boy." Like, I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> so he might be upset. <laughs> and, I, and I pinned it, yeah. and people start calling at him like, "I said, damn, I got a little fan base." Yeah. 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 But Jay ain't gonna help me in no fight. <laughs> no, 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 we got you. <laughs> but nah. But after then, I was at the fight, yeah. and like you know, I was with a lot a lot of his camp as I'm doing content. And they were showing me love, so I was like, okay, I think we're straight now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, that, that was one I was like, I don't know. <laughs> walk, walk it in, walk said, it hey, in a little slow. He slope. said he's 5'5", five, five too. Yeah. Don't matter. He's 5'5". Five, five. I don't care what, man. How tall is Ryan Garcia? 5'9". Yeah. About 5'9". Yeah. He could be a DB. 
right? Yeah. He could be a DB. Right, right. Right? Javon did five, about five, he about five, okay, I gave him five, six on a good day. He five, five, that, that, he's still coming up underneath for you. <laughs> I ain't got time for that, man. <laughs> Lou, you mentioned the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. In this space that you're in right now, you know, things can get oversaturated, people come and go. But for you, what do you consider, you know, your Super Bowl moment? Is it a big screen? Is it a is it a sitcom? Is it touring, stand up? What's that pivot look like? I think for me, I don't want to just be like a a, a, a comedian or a stand up comedian. You know what I mean? When people are like, oh, you gonna get on this stage? Okay, cool, but like. You know, I'm, I'm, I want that, I want that motion picture. You know what I mean? I want that, you, y'all pulling up to the red carpet at my movie premiere. You know what I mean? I want, I, I want that. I want it all for real. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't just limiting myself on one box. You know what I mean? I, and I, I pride myself on being versatile. You know, what I, mean? I had a coach who told me the more you can do, the more, the, 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 the then you stay on the team. Right. The more you can do, the, 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 the more valuable you are. So if I, and I play DB, I ain't just play DB. I played corner, nickel, and safety. Wow. That's why I was able to swing in there for a couple, five, four, five years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because of the versatility. So with this, it's like I ain't just gonna play the hood dude on the street. Yeah. I can play, I can play the dad. I can play the principal. I can play the uncle, the coach, the father, the son, the everybody. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Every, any room I can, I can, or any uh, situation I can make happen. So I think for me, it's like. My Super Bowl moment would be a blockbuster movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, I no disrespect to the stand up and all that. I ain't just doing this chitlin circuit, man. I'm right. trying to, I'm trying to eat. Right. You know I, mean? I want to be legendary. I want my daughter to be like, my, my dad was in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my dad right there. Straight up. Fellas, I need y'all help. It's time to make these picks for DraftKings Sportsbook. And y'all boys know a little bit more about making these picks than me. Honestly, I'm gonna tell you, don't call me a homer. Ride with Miami, baby. They are healthy now. They're doing their thing, playing as a team. I'm telling you, they're going to surprise a lot of people. And since we're in the city of angels, I'm looking for a blessing, baby. I got to go with L.A. Let's go. (laughs) I don't know if it's going to be Miami or if it's going to be L.A., but listen, you make your pick, and DraftKings Sportsbook is the place to do it. Like, think about all of the different comedians who do become stars. You know, Eddie, one of Eddie Murphy's biggest roles is in Dreamgirls, right? Jamie Foxx has been in Ali, he was Ray. And so we've seen comedians make that, that switch or that change because they're just ultimately talented people, mm-hmm. not just necessarily people that make you laugh. Yeah, I was gonna ask, what's the difference? Because we talked about, you know, uh, Harlem Nights, one of my favorite movies of all time. Right. You know, like that, where right, you're making right, movies. Right. That's what you're talking about. That's what, and, not and, a little and, knockoff and, here, no, the man, little hood, I, I, the, man, the, weed, the weed is missing. One of them shows. I ain't talking about no, no disrespect. <laughs> I ain't talking about no Tubi. You know what I mean? Every time you say no disrespect, we all know disrespect is coming. <laughs> and, and, and the thing about me is I'm behind the scenes as well. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm coming up with the content. Yeah. I can come from behind the scenes. I want to be directing on the screen, behind the screen. I want to put people on at the same time. In any discussion or argument I have, like once it starts to get heated, I immediately start talking like I'm on TV. Mm-hmm. Because I'm trying to work on myself and not like get hot or scream mm-hmm. or and so I'm like no I, I start talking like I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. Well, if you look at it now the trade says you know what I'm saying people are like hold on man don't talk to me like your TV voice. Yeah yeah right? yeah. Right. When you get in a relationship, do you ever accidentally fall into a character? When oh you yeah yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I piss women off. <laughs> nah, hundred percent. I know. I piss my my daughter's mother off a lot. You know what I mean just and we we have a good cordial relationship. We co-parent very well. You know I've done a lot of dumb things. But we're on, a, uh, we're on the other side of it now. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, even my daughter, she thinks she's a little comedian. You know what I mean? I mean hey, she got it honest. Right. What you gonna do? Right. Deal with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I definitely can get in character sometimes or a girl arguing with me and she's like, look here, okay? This is not one of your little videos, <laughs> all right? We not doing that today. Right. This ain't no TikTok real boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, baby, it's TikTok and then it's IG reels. <laughs> right, Pick exactly. One. Now she more pissed off. Now, now, now she even matter. You don't, you don't ever get to, whoa, TikTok pay for this meal. Hey, girl try to get a little disrespectful. Like, you know, I ain't say this, but she like, so I see you doing your little video. Lil? <laughs> huh? Lil what? This little video got this Uber Black. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uber Black. Yeah. This, this little video got that lobster tail. What you want to do? You talk about the women, man. Like, you get sensual and romantic, or you just be silly all the time? Because I be, I, I can't do the sensual stuff. It's not in my nature. I, I'm, I'm not like that uh, rom-com. I ain't doing it. But I'm, at the same time, I know how to laugh my way in. You know? <laughs> and uh, and I'm a, I, I'm, I do, I am, I'm, a, I'm a ladies' man. You know what I mean? But, but it's same, like, you know, I, but that's always been me, though. Even in, you know, grade school to now, never had a problem with women. Like, the, like other comedians doing what they do. They're like, man, I know them girls from that. i like, bro, I had that Super Bowl. I, you ain't had that Super Bowl type of vibe, baby. Yeah. So you don't know about this. I know how to handle all this. Little IG stuff, I do, I do that. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, you mean, so you, when you go in, you tell her, you know, I'm going to set the plate and t- get, get the eight or whatever the hell you were saying with Gilly. So you do all that stuff that you were talking about? What you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, know that's what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I mean? Has, has any woman ever requested right. a <laughs> character? Yeah, like, they don't want to mess with Lou. They want to mess with Coach Lou. I definitely have, have seen something. I'm like, and she kind of like, she's like, what's that video? I, I, I said, oh, you like, OK. And I give her that, you know, she that? wanted that She wanted that Gilly. I'm like, look here, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Either we're gonna get a shot or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I, I don't mind putting a performance on for that. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate goal. <laughs> you know, when you think of where you are now, though, and yeah, I was cut. You know, my, after my second year, I was cut by the Giants. Tom Coughlin told me, I don't think you can play in this league. I don't think you can hold up mm. 16 games. And I kind of just internalized it, understood what he was saying, tried to move on and be better. But, you know, my career could have ended, ended then. I started working at LSU. You know, obviously, 11 years later, I was blessed to continue playing. Uh, then I retired. But it's about starting that second career. For you, did you, were you able to adjust right away and move in to say, OK, now it's time to make that second play, the second act of my life? Or was there some difficulty in getting into it? 2019, uh, I was rehabbing in Arizona was with the Cardinals, and then went into the uh, AAF, mm-hmm. right? And, I, and my agent's like, he said, Lou, man, you do this. Uh, get you some tape, show him that you, you know, you're back healthy, whatever, whatever. Then, we, then training camp come around, we do that. So at that same time, while I was rehabbing, I was a little down. I just was like, man, I called my boys up. I was like, bro, I think I might start doing these videos, man. I'm just start, you know, because my, my agent's son, Tony Jr., he, he was like, uh, Lou, man, Lou should do, con- he should really do it. And at that time, I probably had like 10,000 followers, all, strictly all football. And um, I was doing that, went to the AAF, that league ended like that. Mm-hmm. But at that same time, like, after every meeting, after every day, I was making videos. You know what I'm saying? So when that uh, day ended, that last day, I'm looking around the locker room, everybody's kind of, it felt like that uh, Booby Miles Friday Night Lights <laughs> when he had the trash bag. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, he'd get in the car with his uncle. He's like, I get too dumb to play football. You didn't even my seat. We both to go to the bro. <laughs> he gave the big house. And I was doing that, and everybody's like, man, Lou, shut up, man, shut up. <laughs> I said, hey, look, man, I see y'all on the side, man. I'm, I'm going to get this, this comedy check, bro. And I ain't looked back since. So I just went straight into it. Yeah. I went straight into it from that day. I ain't looked back. What happened with the AAF? Because you was a part. I never heard the real story, because yeah. it, it had like three games, two games. Hey, well, come on, Chen. It was, it was like seven games. Come on, man. Seven? You're always disrespectful Oh, the whole shit. league together. No, it was seven, seven total times. games. I had seven checks. <laughs> I'm still 0-3. <laughs> but when, when, you, when the season ends halfway through, what happened? We was game planning for a, a game, and, and I remember the kickers were on their phones. It was a walkthrough, and they just was like, everybody started looking at it, and it was like a, you know, do 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 and everybody looked. And then come in the locker room, they're like, hey, guys, don't panic. We're going to have a meeting tomorrow, boom, boom. Don't worry about it. It's going to be situated. That next day, you had to clean your lockout. That was it. Came in, they said, clean your lockout, football over. <clears throat> Went bankrupt. They MC hammered us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what Jay said, man? I like hammer. 30 mil won't hurt me. You know, and this is the last question, man. I, I want to know for you, like, we all have that moment. 
You know, like I, I remember being in the playoffs, divisional round against Baltimore, playing a game, and I was like, man, like I finally feel like this is it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like everybody knows what I've always thought or known about myself. In this second act for you, what was that moment where you said, nah, this is it. Like I'm in a place to where now I know I'm making an impact on people in this second act of mine. It was Steve Harvey reached out to me and his sons reached out to me and they brought me out of the Family Feud um, and made me just go, like, I got there. I'm thinking I'm just doing some content behind the scenes, playing, joking around. And they was like, now nah, you're going on stage. And it's a Family Feud audience before he comes out there. And they said, go ahead, bro. And I went out there and it was like, I think for me playing, like I say, with the football and sports, when them lights come on, I'm straight. Yeah. That's like an easy meal to me. And then I walked out there, I saw like three little aunties in the front row, three of them. And I just honed in on them and had the whole crowd do it. And I, after I come off the stage and he's like, hey, you about to sign him. So I was, after that, I was like, oh, this, this, is, this is a wrap. If a king of comedy say, we about to sign him, he, ke he cleared the whole green room out. Just want to talk to me and him. Wow. He told me, he was like, bro, he said, you, he said, you don't even realize, he said, you could do jokes without even saying a word. And that's just what he saw from me by looking. I didn't know he was watching, but he was watching the whole time I was on the stage. And after that, I said, oh yeah, that's, that's, we, we up now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, I think there's been so many times that we get, I get messages I want you to do an athlete who didn't get to fulfill his dream or who didn't get everything that he wants. And they're always, they're always looking for us to do an athlete that's like now working at McDonald's, you know, or an athlete that's now fell off when they don't realize that it's somebody like a Lou Young mm -hmm. who they never really associate with ball anymore, who decided that I can have another passion and I can excel at it, but also that background helps. And I know Fred always wants to know this and you kind of have, have hit on it a lot, but I guess just to end, when you are doing comedy, you're uplifting people. Mm -hmm. Like you say, when they see you, they want you to do those certain things. What is the ultimate impact you want to have? Because making people laugh is a source of therapy, yeah. right? For, for so many, but you also said, outside of that, I just don't want to make people laugh and just do comedy. I want to move into this. What's Lou Young's impact as a man? I think it's, it's uh, inspiring you know, young kids from I'm from in D.C. or well, all over, really, to not just limit yourself. Or don't, don't just be one dimensional. You know what I mean, it's, it's, you can have multiple talents. You don't have to just okay, it's all or nothing. One thing like, and it's not. It's not. A, it's not you don't have to think of it as like a plan A or a plan B. It can all be part of the plan A. Mm. They get drafted tomorrow. They're not going to play 30 years in the NFL. Yeah, it's all a part of the plan. It's, it's about treating people right. I think just, just that character is going to carry a long way. So I think for me, uh, my, my impact is just my character. And it's like I'm, I'm personable with people. I make people feel a part of my journey. Um, the, these wins are not just on me. It's the support I get. I'm not able to go to red carpet fights or get all access at the draft now after being retired, you know what I'm saying, without the support of my fan base. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm gonna document it all and make y'all feel a part of it. I ain't gonna be stingy with it. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show everything. And I and the comments is so rewarding because it's like, damn, I feel like I'm a part of it. Cause you are. Y'all are a part of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here without y'all, God and my family. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all flowers the same way y'all give me flowers. So I just want to say yeah. thank you because. You know, there are days, man, that I'm just sitting at the crib and ain't nothing going on, and I just go down a rabbit hole and you, you enjoy them and you watch them all and you realize that there's so much talent, so much thought, so much work that goes into everything. And in the end, I always come back, I was like, oh yeah, that's just Lou, you know? And I right. think what you've been able to do is give the world your talent, but still be just Lou. Yeah. So man, keep doing the same thing, bro. Keep inspiring. We're gonna keep watching, keep rooting you on. Appreciate it. Man. My dog. Appreciate, Appreciate you, fam. That's a nice shirt right there, RC. Huh? Just Lou. Oh, love, baby. You said just, just Lou? Just, just hey. Lou it. Yeah, yeah. Nah, just Lou it. Nah, 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 give it to him. Hey. We, nah, nah, we got nah, 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 to put it out first. Hey, Fred, we got to put it out first and make it sound off. Just Lou it. Hold up. Limitless. Biggest to me, guy, pinning it. 
I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling got me up. On the mission got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Nigga, send me cow pinning it. I fought the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling got me up. On the mission got me up.